Edge AI is the deployment of artificial intelligence algorithms to local or edge devices, rather than relying on remote or cloud computing for such processing. It is a fast-growing field used to solve difficult problems in manufacturing, health services, agriculture, and other industries. Let's take a moment to review how training and deploying a machine learning model works. A model is the set of rules that we want our program to learn. We start by training, which means feeding a lot of data into the training algorithm, usually with the ground truth labels that we've assigned to each piece of data. This machine learning algorithm then automatically updates the parameters inside the model so that it can more accurately predict the desired labels based on the given data. Machine learning engineers use frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, and Scikit-Learn to train models. Because training is computationally expensive, it usually requires powerful hardware. As a result, a lot of model training is done in the cloud with the help of powerful servers and AI accelerators. These accelerators often take the form of many graphics cards working in parallel to efficiently crunch numbers. Once you are happy with the performance of your model, you then deploy it to your end device. From there, you send live, new data to your model where it tries to predict the label or value based on the rules established during training. This process of using the model to identify new, never-before-seen data is known as inference. The hope is that the model performs just as well in the field as it did during training, and you still get accurate results. But sometimes, you find that the model does not perform as well as expected, so you need to retrain or fine-tune the model with additional data and training. As models can vary in complexity, performing inference can still require a good amount of processing power, but it's usually not as intensive as training. As a result, many models are deployed to cloud-based servers for inference. However, in some cases, they can also be deployed to edge hardware, such as laptops, phones, and even low-power IoT devices. Let's look at an example of where we might want to do that. Assume you run a factory. At the end of the assembly line, you want to install a camera for automated quality control. You're looking for defects or other issues during production. With cloud-based AI, inference needs to be performed on large servers. That means you must stream raw data over your network and across the internet to be processed on a remote server. Results are then used in an application, such as a dashboard or automatically notifying operators that an anomaly was detected. In addition to notifying an operator, perhaps you want the device to take immediate action to stop the production line, as an anomaly might slip through or cause unwanted damage to the equipment. One big issue with this approach is that the round-trip time of sending data to a server and waiting for the results might be hundreds of milliseconds or full seconds. This wait time is known as network latency. Waiting that long to stop a production line might be catastrophic, especially if there is a potential safety hazard. Another problem arises when you start installing more cameras. Streaming all of that raw data begins to take up a lot of network bandwidth. You might find that you have to upgrade your network or compromise on the number of installed devices. What if, instead, you could run these models on the cameras themselves? Microprocessors and microcontrollers have become very powerful, and we can optimize many machine learning models to run on small, energy-efficient devices. This gives rise to Edge AI, where we can perform complex machine learning tasks on cheaper devices without relying on cloud computing. In our factory example, this means that if one of our smart cameras detects a problem, it can immediately trigger the emergency stop to prevent any further damage. Such a notification also takes up much less bandwidth than constantly streaming video data. From there, you can also send a low data rate notification to an operator to look into the matter. Edge AI allows us to reduce the network bandwidth required to transmit large amounts of raw data across the internet. It also minimizes the latency required to transmit that raw data and wait for a response from cloud services. By running inference on low-power devices, we can also save on energy consumption. 
Additionally, these edge devices can continue to work even with network interruptions or outages, which increases the reliability of operation. Finally, by not streaming data across the network, we can help protect user privacy, as the data is processed right on the device itself. In other words, Edge AI allows us to tackle unique problems like self-driving cars, wake word detection, and predictive maintenance. It also allows us to save time and money by simplifying network architecture as well as reducing bandwidth usage and energy consumption. That being said, Edge AI is not a remedy for all machine learning needs. There are times when you have to use cloud computing, as the machine learning models are too complex to run on local computers or IoT devices. For example, running the latest ChatGPT model requires dozens or hundreds of gigabytes of RAM. A centrally located model, like one running in the cloud, is often easier to maintain and update. It also allows for remote access to the model from anywhere, so long as you have an internet connection on your device. A compromise might be to use fog computing, where you replicate the cloud capabilities onto a local or regional edge server that you control. Finally, note that if you want to expand your edge AI capabilities, it usually means purchasing additional hardware. This holds true whether you are using local servers or running the model on the end devices. One of my favorite examples of Edge AI is the home smart speaker, as it uses a combination of both Edge and cloud-based AI. You've probably seen devices like this before. To use them, you say the wake word and then ask a question. Alexa, what's the weather like outside? It's 67 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. The smart speaker is always listening, but in a limited way. A simple model is running on the smart speaker's processor. It only responds to a particular word or phrase, which is Alexa in this case. Everything else is ignored. Once it hears that, it begins to stream raw audio to a cloud server, which performs inference using a much larger and more complex machine learning model. This model performs intent analysis to figure out what the person is asking for. It looks up that information and sends the response back to the speaker, which then plays it in audio form. The smaller model running locally on the speaker allows it to respond to a user in real time without having to waste bandwidth constantly streaming audio. The larger cloud model, on the other hand, performs the much more complex task of figuring out what the user is asking for. Many wearables, like smartwatches and rings, can be used to track sleep and exercise activities. For complex models, cloud computing might be required, but many are simple enough that they can run on the device itself or an attached smartphone. In other cases, the model can run entirely locally on the end device. For example, automated optical inspection systems look for defects in manufacturing processes. Smart cameras can be used to identify issues with packaging or pallet loading. Even without cameras, sensor data like electrical current, vibration, and sound is useful for monitoring machinery and moving parts for potential problems. Such data can be mixed together and analyzed for anomalies. Autonomous vehicles and robots can't assume a stable internet connection, so most of the processing must be done on the vehicle itself. While Ericsson predicts there will be 7.3 billion smartphones in the world by 2025, IDC estimates there will be some 41.6 billion IoT devices producing 200 million terabytes per day. That's a lot of data to transmit through the network if we have to rely on cloud computing. By pushing AI and compute closer to the devices that produce the data, we can free up much of that bandwidth. At their recent Data and Analytics Summit, Gartner estimated that in 2021, about 10% of all data processed by deep neural networks occurred in endpoint devices on the edge. They predicted that this will increase to 55% by 2025, which demonstrates how the edge AI market is exploding. In addition to the growing demand and software advancements, the hardware industry is also stepping up. Gartner predicts that AI accelerator chip revenue will reach $137 billion by 2027, growing by a five-year compound annual growth rate of 26.5%. All this points to a booming AI industry, and Edge AI will continue to play an important role by augmenting existing IoT and end-user devices. 
Edge AI helps by limiting bandwidth, lowering latency, reducing energy consumption, enhancing device reliability, and ensuring data privacy. I'm excited to see what unique challenges you tackle with Edge AI. Next up, we will dive into some technical details about the different types of Edge AI processors and how to choose the best one for your needs. Thank <laughs> you.